Hi all, thanks for watching this video. Welcome to a small demonstration on Apache Hadoop Hive. In this video, we are going to see very thoroughly what is Hive and where it is going to fall and what are the advantages that we are going to get it and how, how and where we are going to use Hive. That's what we are going to see very thoroughly in this introduction actually. Let me go ahead and introduce what is Hive actually. Hive is a data warehousing tool or it's a data warehousing facilities which has just built on top of the Hadoop which can be used for data summarization for a large data analytics and also for the reporting purpose. So Hive is going to eliminate writing the large complex MapReduce programming in Java where we can just write the simple Hive queries where this is, these are the queries which is going to be do our purpose actually. So as you know here, if you are taking the simple example here, so as you know, you know, when big data was born, okay, it is born with two ecosystems. One is going to be the HDFS file system, which is just it's going to deal with our big data storage purpose. Then the next thing is going to be MapReduce. MapReduce is the one more ecosystem. It's a Hadoop core components. Hadoop was born with these two core components only. So this is going to be the HDFS file system. So the simple thing is it's, a, it's going to be the HDFS file system. HDFS Hadoop distributed file system which is just is going to deal completely to deal with your big data analytics, big data storage purpose and the next one is going to be the processing MapReduce. MapReduce is the programming techniques it's not a language directly it's a programming techniques using which you are going to process the large data sets with the help of your MapReduce program so as you know it's a framework it's a paradigm actually so obviously in order to write your MapReduce program obviously you have to take one of the probably Java help or C++ or Python or any one of the programming language so obviously people who are there in the market to write your MapReduce program is very very less actually so by the time actually when people are like forget about introducing the new MapReduce programs but to maintain the existing programs itself the big organizations like Facebook Yahoo and all they started struggling to maintain them because they are running every day thousands of jobs in their production environment actually. So in order to address this one mainly people who know something basics about the SQL basic SQL they can go ahead and just write their uh, SQL scripts then those scripts can be just converted into series of MapReduce program based on the nature of the query. So now what is Hive here? Hive is a, let me go ahead and define the Hive here. So Hive is a, it's a data warehousing facility which is built on top of your MapReduce programming actually. So if you see very clearly here, Hive is the one, this is the Hive actually. It is built on top of where? In HDFS and also the MapReduce program. So indirectly here, Hive is going to just end of the day, it's going to store its data in a HDFS file system and also whenever you see here whenever you you are going to write the small queries here simple e0 sql queries here uh, generally we'll be calling in our high we are going to call that one as a high queries actually so those will be converted into series of MapReduce programs okay these series of MapReduce programs will be working on top of the hdfs file system this is called exactly the hive is going to follow in our production environment Okay, so let's go ahead and see now what is the architecture of our Hive actually. So let me go ahead and just pull that one. So now you can see very clearly here in my slides I put very clearly in a Hive it's going to use both HDFS and MapReduce technologies to just store the data to process the data actually. So initially Facebook was the one who was just facing this issue where they are running thousands of MapReduce programs in their production environment in order to maintain them actually they are facing a lot of issues. For that reason only they started thinking one more language that is going to be the Hive actually. So Apache Foundation later on took this one as a full time project and it named this name as a Apache Hive actually. 
okay so that is what it's going to do so now let me go ahead and introduce here the hive architecture actually it's very simple actually so now here you can see this is the hive architecture so hive is the using your some of the facilities or interfaces you can just access your hive or you should be able to create the hive tables you can you are able to interact with the hive warehouse actually let me go ahead and tell you one by one how we are going to access or how we are going to process our hive engine actually so the first and foremost thing very very widely used one is going to be the cli command line interface actually using command line interface using command line interface we will be getting the hive shell also we will be calling this one as a hive shell using which you can just go ahead and trigger your hive queries run the hive script those will be sent to the hive driver actually we are going to see this part very thoroughly in a moment actually now the next thing is going to be the using hive web interface actually this is the next web interface where like you are going to open one url in that you are going to just put your hive queries those will be just you are going to just click on the execute and those will be submitted to your hive execution engine actually that is the same thing how you are going to do you in your cli the same thing it's going to happen in the high web server web interface the only difference here is like you are going to put your queries in a interface in on on top of your web ui instead of just going and opening the command line interface okay the next thing is going to be the thrift server as you know you can invoke or you can just create or you can just trigger your hive queries from the external system using the jdbc odbc as you know jdbc means java database connection odbc odbc is the other than the using your java you can just connect to this server actually so now using the thrift server hive thrift server what i mean by this one here is hive is going to run is always one server that is called hive server 2 using which you are going to connect to that server where external guy who is not there as a part of our hive cluster he can simply connect to this one using my thrift server actually it's going to send the response to the request to the thrift server this server is the one who is going to send to my uh, execution engine that is what it is going to take care of my high queries and the same thing the response also will be delivered back to the client actually that is what thrift server these are the mainly widely used the interfaces or widely used the how we can access our hive execution engine actually actually okay so let's go ahead and see what are the driver components we are going to see what are the hive components within that we are going to see mainly driver is the one who is going to take care of your entire hive execution actually okay driver is the one who is going to take care of your entire hive execution so you can see very clearly this is the parser parser is the first and foremost thing first whenever you are going to just get your hive sql okay that will be parsed which means it's going to check whether it is not there any syntax error user errors and everything it's going to make sure then after that it is going to optimize your query actually what i mean by optimization here is generally when as a programmer if you are not placed your high queries in the proper place for example if you are going to just to filter out your data probably on top of your data when you are going to filter out the data before filtering probably you might be seeing the millions of records but after filtering you are going to see probably probably thousands of records so your use case is going to be just to working on thousands of records at, at end actually but here as a programmer if i'm going to put everything probably without filtering i'm going to put my queries and at end of the query or script i'm going to just have my filtering which is unnecessarily i just processed my millions of records right so automatically my driver is the one who is going to optimize my query and it's going to place to the proper place my queries actually that is called optimizer so hive is automatically is going to optimize my hive script then it's going to create the execution plan actually so the planner is the one who is going to just convert into the sorted series of MapReduce program and that will be handed over to the executions actually so execution engine is the one who is going to just convert them and put it as a in dot jar file as a MapReduce program and that will be just handed over to the 
resource manager as you know when you are going to just uh, talk about here map redis program here is going to be see and obviously you are going to see the yarn architecture here so now whenever you just execution engine is going to hand over the program to the map redis program map redis program is the one which will be executed on top of your hdfs file system and you are going to see the end results back to the client actually that is what we are going to see exactly in our hive actually and one more thing we have here is meta store actually meta store is a database actually actually meta store will be used to store our hive to store our hive tables definition for example if you have created the databases if you have created the columns if you have created any probably table definition so those things we have to maintain at one place so that whenever you are going to just fire the query that query will be validated against this meta store for that purpose only we are going to use meta store it's kind of a metadata for our hive actually how we are going to see the name node metadata the exactly the same way we are going to see the meta store for our hive actually so meta store can be used as a database by default we are going to see as a derby database apache hadoop is going to just give as a derby database for us so derby database is a default database it's a embedded database and it is one of the rdbms database you can replace this database is going to be with probably mysql oracle which is a very famous in our prod environment where it will be replaced because we have some drawbacks about or limitations out of the derby database it's a file oriented database that is the reason we are going to replace it okay that is a complete architecture of the hive actually so where and all we cannot use hive actually so here whenever you if your rdbms is not doing your purpose probably with the small data then obviously your hive also cannot do with the the data actually whatever hot dbms can do your hive can do on top of the big data that is the only reason why we are just going with hive actually okay and also if you are looking for a hive for the small data sets if your data is not in a in in a is small in size obviously you should not look for the hive actually if which is nothing but if you are looking for the low latency queries then obviously it is not good for that one and as well as if you are going to go with the oltp transaction processing related things obviously hive is not good for thing okay and also hive is going to work as a data warehousing tool which means you are going to get the data from different data sources probably using your one of the ecosystem within the hadoop you are going to probably you can use pig or you can use hadoop map reduce or you can use hbase using them you are going to just refine your data you are going to just frame your data after that you are going to dump the data into your hive hive warehouse so that you can just you can just query you can just summarize your data in a easy case or you can just probably you can just query or you can just create the report or you can just run the ad hoc queries on top of the data in a fingertip so that it will be converted into series of map redis program here as a hive developer i don't have to worry about creating the big big map redis program completely my map redis program is going to take care of for me actually okay so the next thing is going to be the hive data model so hive is going to accept all types of uh, uh, tables i mean we are going to see the different types of table we are going to see very thoroughly in our classes what are the different types of tables and how it's going to accept how it's going to work on top of our hadoop hdfs actually okay so now hive is going to accept or it's going to work with the partitions also the way we are going to divide our data into number of partitions and you are going to organize our data in a particular way within the table also and also hive is going to uh, support the buckets concept also which is very 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 important thing actually it's going to useful for our sampling our data or joining is is going to become very easy using our buckets concept actually so like i said here hive is going to just use it's a data warehousing tool which is built on top of the hadoop so obviously it has to store its data on top of the hdfs file system so this is the default location where our hive is going to just to be used actually okay and the data that we are going to create the tables that we are going to create obviously will be stored in our in this location only okay then coming back to the use cases when and all we have just we are going to just to use about that hive that's what we just now we just discussed about about that one and also whenever you are going with the prod 
production environment you can see very clearly probably you can go ahead and just process your clickstream data so what i mean by clickstream data generally if you are taking any example any website probably any user are visiting my website the path how how this user is accessing from whenever it's landing in my home page which and all path or what path is following to buy my products actually that's what i need to research by collecting the clickstream data i need to research on the product and i need to just come up with the data on takes probably which products this guy is buying or what is the path is following to just buy the product actually the same thing i can just follow the same thing for other uh, customers and i can just try to recommend them i can create the recommendations in engine on top of my big data using our hive actually and for example if you want to run on the, run the ad hoc queries on top of your large data actually so generally when your data is small in data and small in size in, in terms of gbs then don't go with the hive actually this one this will come into the picture whenever the data is going to be the large in size actually and also for example if i want to just address the customer complaints actually on top of my large amount of data probably if they are coming to my site and they are facing some issues and that's what i found using my clickstream data and i can address them using this by just running ad hoc queries on top of that one i can just i can just address this one using my high queries actually and also we can go ahead and use i have in the uh, predictive modeling and also you can go ahead and use uh, the hive in a recommendation engine and also we are going to use the data summarization and just create the simple reports end of the day after your you got the data from your data source and you applied some of the data analytics on top of the data and you massage it and finally you are going to see some end results that end results you would like to just show to the uh, end clients actually end customers or your stakeholders or your leadership generally just they can they can go ahead and just fire the queries on top of the large amount of data and they can see their reports just like that using this data warehousing tool that is called hive which is built on top of our hadoop okay thank you so much for watching this video thank you bye